Content is intended to provide accurate information, however, is not intended as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult a financial, legal, or tax professional for specific information regarding your individual situation. Opinions expressed and provided are for general informational purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. Cornerstone Retirement Partners presents Your Course to Retirement with Grand Rapids Certified Financial Planner Ron Corser and Nolan Gosley. Cornerstone Retirement Partners are planning today for the potential of tomorrow. And welcome into the program. This is Your Course to Retirement with CFP Ron Corser, founder at Cornerstone Retirement Partners. Each and every week we turn to Ron for guidance and perspective, some exceptionally uncommon common sense with your money, what we should be doing with our financial investment and retirement decisions and what we need to be paying attention to in the financial world. Ron, always a pleasure to have you on the program. Good morning, Peter, and good morning, everybody listening to today's program. Um, today, we're kind of doing a list of things, uh, the last couple of programs, and this is another one, 12 steps to determine if you're really ready to retire. And these 12 steps, we're going to see if we can get through them all in today's program. But keep in mind, there's really two steps above these. It doesn't matter if we do 10 steps to retirement, 12 steps to decide, and other programs do the same thing. It really gets down to two things. Number one, and always we've talked about the program, do you have enough money in retirement, enough income in retirement to retire? And I always go back to you, Peter. You've got $10 million sitting in the bank. You're in hog heaven. And you ask me if I can you know, tell you if you're ready to retire and can you? And my simple question is, well, Peter, you got $10 million. Well done. How much money do you need this year if you retire today to maintain your lifestyle? And you said, well, Ron, don't be a dope. I need a million bucks a year. I got a lifestyle. And my, and my, my, my sense that I'm going to have to tell you is not going to be fun. I'm going to say, Peter, you don't have enough income in retirement to retire. So these 12 steps are really focused around the idea of finding out if you have enough income in retirement to retire, and then figuring out what you have to do to make sure that, that your number, so to speak, meaning how much income do you need every month coming in to maintain your lifestyle is there. But th there was a conference uh, that I got some information out of, which was interesting. It says that the number one, you might call it fear or concern of folks getting ready to retire is running out of money. The speaker at this conference said, well, there's another one, and we might call this 1B, where number 1A is running out of fear of running out of money. 1B, which is very close to that, but doesn't get a lot of conversation, is the fear of having a catastrophic health occurrence in your retirement plan. Uh, it could be a long-term care event. It could be a custodial event. Nothing. Who knows? Uh, but that is, that's, that's kind of the underlying Thing that we only, I guess, whisper about and, and we hope doesn't happen. And sometimes we pretend that if we don't talk about it, it won't happen. But it, but it does happen. And if we live long enough, we're going to need some sort of custodial help. That doesn't mean it's, you know, we're going to be put in somebody's basement and hosed down twice a week, whether we need it or not. But it's, it's they go together. Am I going to have enough income in retirement to retire? And are we going to build into this income plan some sort of buffer that says if we have a health care a health care occurrence, have have we talked about it? Have we thought about it? Do we have some options to deal with it? So, ladies and gentlemen, keep those two ideas in mind. Do you have enough income in retirement to retire? And have we in this income plan at least talked about or figured out some options if you have a, a serious healthcare issue going on in your life that happens. So if these two ideas are important to you, ladies and gentlemen, and you'd like to talk about them, give us a call at our office, 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581, or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. That's www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there or give us a call at the office. We will help you however you communicate with us. Because I think it's important. Yes, it's always important to have a good strategy for investment. It certainly is key to have all the income you need coming in every month to retire. But it's also important that somebody's helped you talk about what are the options for dealing with a healthcare 
issue that perhaps is uh, difficult to talk about right now because we don't want to, but it can happen. So give us a call if this is important, 616-301-2581. 616-301-2581. Speaking of communication, you can also go online, cornerstone-rp.com, cornerstone-rp.com. You can hit the contact us page right there on the website. You can send them a direct email email, lots of ways to be in touch, but the easiest here on the program, just give a call 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. Now those, those concerns, Ron, those fears in retirement, they can be addressed. Being proactive with how we handle those questions, those fears or concerns is the key. And so this list of the 12 questions that will help us to determine, are we ready to retire or how prepared we are really is a helpful resource in making sure that we are proactive in addressing these concerns and the multiple factors that could potentially contribute to their cause. And so I, I'd love to move through this list with you here on the program, but also remind the listeners, the viewers of the show, that if you'd like to get this list, yeah. then reach out and be in touch because the team from Cornerstone Retirement Partners, happy to hear from you and happy to get this list in your hands. But Ron, moving through these questions, these issues on this list of 12, are you ready to retire questions will really go a long way in helping to address some of those concerns. Yeah. And let's start with the first question. And it's a good one. I'm just going to read it off here. And this 12 step, I guess, form that we have, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to have it, how to how prepared are you 12 steps to figure out if you're really ready to retire financially in terms of health care and everything else, give us a call at 616-301-2581. And we'll send you this. We can email it to you or just put it in the mail. It's a nice handy checklist, but it's one of those checklists that really goes into depth. So if, if you're interested in the details of your retirement, uh, this, is a great, this is a great list to just go down. So let's take a look at the first question. Do you know how long you would be able to generate income if you needed to, if your paycheck stopped today. So if, if today was your last day, today's Sunday's program, but Friday was your last day at work, ladies and gentlemen, and you're on your way to church this morning and you're figuring out, do I have enough income in retirement to retire? It's really important to get an answer to that question. And it's important to get an answer to that question that, that really labels or brings out in black and white what the real numbers are. What do I mean by that? A lot of what happens in our industry is that, well, let's use that 4% rule. If you have a half a million dollars, you should be able to take out 4% of your life savings or $20,000 a year for as long as you live in a basic 60%, 40% kind of portfolio, 60% bonds 40, or 60% stock, 40% bonds and something else. But here's the question. What if you needed 25 or 28 or 30,000? Where's it going to come from? How do you know it's going to be there, not only today, but five years from now or 10 years from now? It's really an important question. And so the only way to really approach this is to, is to do a deep dive into the whole planning issue of how do you create income and retirement that, number one, will last, number two, will come in every month, whether the markets go up, down, or sideways. And number three, we'll give you the income you need to make sure that your lifestyle stays intact because nobody wants to have a reduced lifestyle in retirement. I mean, you've worked all your life to, to live well, maybe not live large as they say, but live well, and nobody wants to go backwards. So it's important to understand and know, number one, are you gonna have enough in retirement and in terms of income? And number two, how exactly are you going to get it? Now, what do I mean? Think about this. I can say to you, Peter, you've got $10 million. You should be able to take 4% out of that. So that's $400,000 a year. It's not what you need. You need more, but you ought to be okay with that. Trust me, don't worry about it. Have a nice life. Or I could say to you, Peter, how about if we do a deep dive and create an income plan of retirement? That'll show you where every dime, every dollar is coming out of every one of your accounts and landing in your checking account on a monthly basis. 
That would include how we deal with the tax issue. That would include if you're on Medicare, how we deal with keeping you under say the, the part B initial level so that you don't pay more. That would include what do we do about the, the drug program, so to speak. That would include what's our alternative plan? What's our fallback position? If something happens to you or your wife, some sort of healthcare issue that puts a lot of strain on your income because hopefully uh, we've planned for it. So if somebody needs care, somebody has a hospitalization, somebody just, you know, they, you have something happens and it impacts your lifestyle and maybe you need outside help. Does the plan incorporate that? So it's more than just saying, have a nice life, take 4% out, you're going to be fine. That doesn't, that doesn't give you the information you need. So what does happen is that if we can help you go through in detail, in detail, step by step, where all the income is going to come from, and that would include Social Security, pension, investment income, dividends, interest, all of that. And how much can we assume is going to be what we call permanent, meaning it doesn't matter what happens, it's going to keep coming, like your Social Security or pension benefit. The more solid we can put a plan together for you that way, the better off you're going to be in retirement, the more peace of mind you're going to have for retirement, and you're going to know, no ifs, ands, or buts, that you've got this thing. It's going to be okay no matter what happens. I particularly like the first question on this list, Ron, because we talked about, I think it was last week or the week before, how a lot of Americans actually don't retire on their own timeline, how about 60% of retirements happen unexpectedly or are, are not planned to the day. And so this question sort of alludes to that. Well, what would happen if your paycheck stopped today? Would you have the income that you needed? And that way, if we can really answer and address this question, we are prepared as we go. We are moving along in a present state of preparedness. Yeah, it's, it's a really important idea to think about. Nobody likes to think about well, I'm going to retire when I'm 65, and tomorrow morning the boss comes to you and says, you know what, we got to make some changes. Or you know what, this is going on. And somehow, some way, all of a sudden, that plan that, that seems so perfect, so formed, so well uh, executed, all of a sudden falls apart. That can happen. It can happen because the boss maybe told you the bad news. It can happen because something happens to your health. There's a lot of ways that our retirement planning timeline can get interrupted. So what's really important, if you think about it, if somebody's out there who's 55 and they say, well, I'm going to work until 65, I think I can do that. Wouldn't it be a good idea, and we can help with this, to say, what happens if, if tomorrow's your last day at work? Would you like to know if you're going to be okay? How would you like to know that? And that's one of the, the planning objectives that we use with, with our potential clients or people we meet or current clients. We say, what if today, today or tomorrow is your last day of work? Are you going to be okay? And there's no wrong answer when we ask that question because we'll either be able to tell you that you're going to be fine, you're going to be all right, or we're going to say, you got some work to do. You're going to have to keep working. But you're going to know what is feasible, what, what you can do right now if you're 55, so to speak, in this example, and, and you can't get into the Medicare system because you're 10 years away from it. So planning is more than just saying, I'm going to plan on working until I'm 65 and I'm 55 right now, so I got 10 good years left. We don't know that. We don't know what God has in store for us, or we don't know what our employer has in store for us either, or the government for that matter, or our health. So it's good to know that if today's the last day we can work, what's going to happen to my family? What's going to happen to my ability to take care of my wife and my children and my grandchildren? What's going to happen to their ability to take care of me if something happens? So ladies and gentlemen, if, I, if I'm hitting a, a note here that's, that's resonating with you, give us a call at our office, 616-301-2581. 616-301-2581. Or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. 
www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there and we can help you find answers to just some of the questions that I've talked about just on the first of these 12 steps that will help you define or know if you're ready to retire. It's a fantastic list that you can get in your hands. Just pick up the phone and give a call 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581 and request the Are You Ready list, the 12 questions to know how prepared you are for retirement. And Ron, I, I don't think the answer to this number one is a simple yes or no. Do you know how long you'd be able to generate the income you need if your paycheck stopped today. I find it hard to just check that box and then move on to the next question. So in fact, the next several questions here really are kind of how do we answer that question? If we don't know, if we're uncertain about the, the answer to question number one, then what is the process? How do we go about answering or addressing a reasonable answer to a level of confidence that question? It, it's a big question, and it really is about three parts to that. The first one is, have you defined what we called, and we've talked about along the program, the income gap? What is that? That's the difference between your predictable or permanent income that you know you can count on, whether that's Social Security, pension, uh, annuity payments that you're getting from someplace versus what you need. So let's say the Social Security pension and annuity payments because there's basically permanent kinds of in, uh, income that we call, comes to $4,000 a year, a month rather. And you need uh, $6,500 a month to live on. So the difference between 6,500 and 4,000 of permanent, that $2,500 is called the income gap. That's the amount of money that has to come out of your life savings from some source, some way, and it has to be done on an after-tax basis. Most of us save most of our money with, with tax-deferred accounts. IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, some of us have Roth accounts, but the majority of the money is in, in the tax-deferred thing. So if you need $2,500 coming out of your IRA on a monthly basis, uh, you may have to take as much as $3,000 a month out to get the $2,500 after state, federal, and local taxes and things like that. So that's, that's an important idea to know, the income gap. And do you know how much investment assets you have that will produce that? And do you have enough investment assets or investable assets after you've, you've filled, so to speak, that income gap that gives you some discretionary income? Because one of the key things I've learned to doing this almost 26 years, at 27 pretty soon, is that most people when they retire, no matter how good a plan we build, I always build in some extra. Why? Because all of a sudden, people have opportunities to do a little extra spending that they never had before when they were working, because they were working five or six days a week, and that limited their vacation time. So all of a sudden, now they have some extra time, so to speak. I'm not calling it free time, because most of the people who retire come into our office after about six months and say, man, I didn't know how I got everything done when I was working. I'm really busy in retirement. But they also have the ability to spend more money, take more vacations, do all kinds of things. So it's important to understand, number one, where am I going to get the income from? Do I understand what my income gap is? And have I filled that income gap? Meaning, have I created accounts that will fill that income gap to the best of our ability to make that permanent? So that $2,500, ideally, if you could make that permanent using annuities or things like that, that would be a good way to approach it if you have enough assets to do that. Because that means that every month you're going to have your number no matter what happens. And that's so important in life. So the other part that's built into that, if you think about it, okay, I know how much money I need in retirement. I got a pretty good plan together because maybe Ron has helped me or Nolan, my other partner. Uh, we kind of filled the income gap. We've got a little money left over. Do I have the right investment strategy to back that up? Do I have the right investment strategy to back that up? Here's what I mean by that. Most investment strategies, if you will, historically in our, in our world, 
have been built on one simple concept that the market over time always goes up. And that's been true. Over time, it always goes up. The difficulty is understanding that sometimes the market doesn't go up and anticipating or predicting when that's going to happen when it goes down. So the, the question is, my strategy is, I got 60% in stocks or mutual funds and things like that, 40% in bonds. I should be okay. And I joke sometimes with folks, I say, let's don't, should, let's don't do shoulds and mights and coulda bees, and I think it's going to be all right. Let, let's really create an investment strategy that not only says if the markets go up, the value of my accounts will go up, but also that will build in some downside protection, a buffer, if you will, because markets do go up, they do go down. So the question isn't trying to get all the gusto of the market. If somebody wants all the market, they're going to get all the upside and they're going to get all the downside. So we've been going through an interesting period here this year with really uh, out of the ordinary volatility. And the market has gone down as much as 15% uh, in some places and as maybe it's around seven or eight, but it's down. It goes up, it goes down. So in trying to figure out how to, how to get through this, to navigate it, it really is important to ask the advisor, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not one of our clients, and you can ask me if you are a client, because I know some of you listen, is there some downside protection in, in the investment strategies we have? And it is important to know that. It is important to create that in your account because you need to have a, a range of returns, but you need to make sure that if the market crashes 50%, you don't lose 50% of your account value. So if this is an idea that makes sense or kind of rings in your ear and say, hey, I'd like to know more about that, investing with a, with a buffer on the downside, so to speak, give us a call, ladies and gentlemen, 616-301-2581. 616-301-2581, or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. It's www.cornerstone-rp.com. Put your information in there, and we'll reach out to you and help you. It's really important to understand that nothing ever goes up forever and nothing ever goes down forever. We just have to make sure that we're protected on the downside as much as possible. It's not possible to do it perfectly, and that we have the ability to have our accounts grow because we need that, because of inflation and cost of living and things like that. So give us a call at 616-301-2581. We'll reach out to you and help you. Ron, you mentioned there that a lot of investors, I, I do think, have the mentality that I want to capture all of the gains of the market, or even I want to beat the market, which on the other side, leaves us exposed to all of the risk or if we are aggressive investors, and that is the posturing, that is the positioning, if we are aiming to beat the market, then when the market does take that downturn, we are positioned in a way that will in all likelihood lose more than the market. And if we talk about that and really examine it, it's actually not a stance that most investors, especially as we are transitioning into retirement or already retired, A, are comfortable with, or B, really is appropriate for that phase in our life. Once again, the number to be in touch with Ron Corser and the team from Cornerstone Retirement Partners, 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. Ron, as you were talking about that, a couple of things struck me. And I think that you are correct that at a surface level, a lot of investors say that their goal is to meet the market or in certain cases, beat the returns of the market. However, that leaves us exposed. That is a stance. That is a positioning that is rather aggressive. And if we are aiming to capture all of the gains of the market or even to capture more than the gains of the market, then we also need to be prepared to experience all of the losses or even more losses when the market turns the other direction. And I don't feel as though most investors in or nearing retirement really want to experience the full losses of the market if we do encounter a downturn or or lose more than the market would would lose and we also need to understand that the income 
that we have generated throughout our lifetimes, the paycheck has what has allowed us to take the risk of the market, whatever risk we did deem to be appropriate during our working career could only be taken because we had the paycheck to support our lifestyle expenses and the investments could be investments. That's why the next question on the list is, do you know how much you have available in discretionary assets over and above the income plan? You know, the, the idea of having a little money left over to do fun stuff or emergency stuff is really an important concept a really important idea to build into a plan. What do we mean by that? When we create an income plan and we're trying to fill what we call the income gap, the difference between whatever permanent income you have in terms of social security pensions or annuity payouts uh, versus what you need, it's important to understand that if we have to use all the money to fill that gap, there's, there's not a lot of wiggle room. So one of the things that it's sometimes difficult to do, but it's so important, is to, is to create a plan that doesn't use all your money to give you the income you need every month coming in. Be, because right now, most people that are working don't use all of their income coming in, most people, uh, to, to supplement their lifestyle. They have a little bit left over for savings, 401k things and stuff like that or to take a vacation. So in terms of planning, it's important to have some money left over, so to speak, in that place where you can go get it to go take a trip to Disneyland or go fishing or go camping or do something. It gives you the opportunity to enjoy retirement. So ladies and gentlemen, if what we're talking about is kind of hit a, hit a soft spot with you or a hot spot, I don't know which it would be, give us a call at 616-301-2581. 616-301-2581 or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com. We'll help you create an in income plan in retirement that will give you as close as possible the income you need in a permanent way to maintain your lifestyle, have some money left over in another place that you can use to have fun, to do other things, to support children or grandchildren, or just to have as a buffer knowing that no matter what happens, you're going to be okay. So give us a call, 616-301-2581. 616-301-2581. Great time to place that call now. Uh, reach the team from Cornerstone Retirement Partners, Ron, Nolan, and the rest of the team there to support you, to help you, to provide essential direction and guidance with your money, with your assets, your investments, and your retirement. 616-301-2581. And we will continue our discussion of this fantastic list to help you know if you are ready to retire when we come back after the break. Cornerstone Retirement Partners presents Your Course to Retirement with Grand Rapids Certified Financial Planner Ron Corser and Nolan Gosley. Cornerstone Retirement Partners are planning today for the potential of tomorrow. Visit cornerstone-rp.com for many valuable resources, including those mentioned on this show and other great episodes of Your Course to Retirement. And we're back on the program. This is your course to retirement. Grand Rapids, your resource each and every week for important information, exceptionally uncommon guidance and advice on what to be doing with your money, with your investments, and your planning in order to achieve your financial goals. And as always here to help us along is Ron Corser, CFP and founder of Cornerstone Retirement Partners. And we are Today, moving through this list, this resource that the team has made available there of the 12 questions to know, are you ready to retire? Now, Ron, we've talked about the, the initial four steps here. Number five on this list, do you hold annual reviews of your plan to assess if you have met previous goals and to set new goals and benchmarks? Why is this so important? Well, what I tell people is very simply when I'm looking at somebody who's thinking about joining our firm. And my response to the review issue is that they're mandatory with our firm. We require at least in the first year and probably ongoing, at least two face-to-face -face reviews. Why do we do that? I tell people really simply, this is not my money. This is your money. This is your life, your retirement plan. Our firm, me, my partner, Nolan, we have to be on the same page as you because it's about you. It's not about us. So getting to know one 
person. I mean, it's a long-term kind of a relationship. I know sometimes people don't like that big R, but it really is. It's, it's about saying to somebody, you know, the last time we were here, you told me you were healthy. Has anything changed? And maybe sometimes people say, yeah, I just saw the doctor and something's going on. Something like that can change a plan. Now, I don't know the, need to know the details, but something like that can change a plan. And maybe we have to make an adjustment. Or maybe something's helping, happened with, you know, one of the members of the family, children or grandchildren. And that's requiring the, the grandparents, our clients, to, to help out. And if we plan for it, we built in some of that in the discretionary end. It makes it so much different uh, in terms of how do we deal with things that come up. But it's really important to maintain constant contact. And we do on the phone. We do call people. We do contact them and talk to them. And we do do the reviews. And I tell people in a kind of in a joking way, here's my rules. And, and if you don't want to go along with them, uh, we're probably not going to be a good match for each other. But the rules are we have to meet at least twice a year face to face. We have to be able to do a, dig, a deep dive. Number two, you have to be able to feel comfortable calling us about any kind of financial information or what's going on in your account. Anything you don't understand, you want clarity on or anything you want to learn new. I mean, that's kind of on the client, but we appreciate you saying, I don't understand this, or I want to mo learn more about this other thing. So it's a two-way street. And that's why we do what we do in terms of reviews. Sometimes people say, wow, you do that many reviews. Yeah, we do. It's important. And if it's important to us, it'll be important to you. And uh, hopefully nothing will fall through the cracks. That's why we do what we do. It's important to have that review on an ongoing basis. Ron, things are going to change in our lives. Things are going to change in the world around us. The unexpected may come up from time to time. And we want to know, well, how much progress have I made? If here are my goals out into the future, am I moving forward toward them? Or do we maybe need to examine new goals? Have we met and exceeded those previous benchmarks? That's always a great conversation to have. Well, what's next? Uh, but we want to have that progress report along the way. Planning never an event. It is an ongoing process. And so uh, making sure that we're having those annual reviews and discussions so important. And that's what the team from Cornerstone Retirement Partners is there for, ladies and gentlemen. Pick up the phone and give them a call, 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. Uh, Ron, the next on the list, have you formulated a plan to use Social Security to maximize income and protect your personal assets? Uh, again, the phrasing of this question, there's there's something there that I particularly like, that, that Social Security is a tool to provide income, yes, but also to protect our personal assets, which, which I think is an important uh, uh, kind of, kind of uh, message of this question. It's an interesting question when it comes to Social Security because you get a wide variety of opinions. Uh, some people come in and say, well, I've heard Social Security is going broke. I better take what I'm 62 because it's not going to be there for me. And I gently try to tell people that if you're over 50, you're going to get Social Security. They may make some adjustments, which they probably will, but you will get your Social Security payment. Uh, I tell people very, it's just my opinion, but I'm pretty open about it. I'm very concerned for my children, especially my grandchildren, when it comes to the Social Security system. But we just deal with what we know. And basically, anybody over 50 is going to get a benefit. They're going to make some adjustments down the road because they have to maybe in terms of how they tax it, but it's really important to understand that it's your benefit. And here's the other key. There's more than one way to slice that loaf of bread, so to speak, of Social Security. There's, there still is available different strategies that perhaps will help people maximize their benefit on a long-term basis. And we can help doing, and we do this every time, a Social Security analysis. It's pretty complete. It gives anywhere from three to five different options on, on how you might access your Social Security benefit to maximize the amount of money you get over time. But here's also the other part to it. Generally, uh, with married couples, one person has a higher benefit than the other. And, and a lot of times that's, that's the man, although that's changing. So part of the Social Security analysis and part of Social Security planning is something called survivorship income. Because when one of the one of the people die, 
one benefit goes away. So sometimes in that planning idea of when to take Social Security, the idea of, I'll use myself with my wife, Nancy, the idea of how do I take care of Nancy with my benefit? Because it's going to go, one of us is going to go away, the benefit if, if I die. So how do we do that? How do we maximize it while we're still alive and maximize it when one of us dies? Very important, really is. And it's a key part of the whole planning process and a key part of that whole income planning issue where we're trying to create as much permanent income as possible to give you the best probability of success in retirement and also the best probability of peace of mind. That's what we do what we do. Well, Social Security is such an important piece of that. And I think that we all appreciate the income reliability that we have with Social Security. But a lot of people, Ron, don't maximize that tool to the the, the furthest extent, maybe leave some money on the table, uh, maybe utilize their own personal assets a, a little bit more than they would need to over the course of their lifetime. And when we have Social Security, there's the, the base of income, fantastic, but it's not what constitutes every dollar that somebody most people need throughout retirement. So we really want to maximize that source. And we also want to Ron, with this next question, know how we would cover the cost of medical and or long-term care expenses should we encounter those during the course of our lifetime. You started off the program talking a little bit about this one, but it's, it's a big question for retirees. For those of you listening to today's program, that's that 1B. 1A is I'm running out of money, but the other real concern is what happens if something happens to me or my wife, for example? Uh, how are we going to deal with that? And it, and it doesn't mean that you have to do something specific, but what it really does mean is, have we talked about and incorporated into our overall retirement strategy the what ifs in life? What if one of us gets sick? What if one of us loses our job while we're still trying to retire? What if one of us needs custodial care? I'm not trying to do this to scare people because I don't, I don't think that's right. But things do happen in life. And, you know, we always have that, that thing in the, in the back of our brain. I go back to when I was a little kid. I have, a, uh, I think, an overactive, overactive imagination. I used to be fascinated by the monster movies as kids. And I would watch it, even though I knew I was going to be scared out of my mind. And if I watched a really scary one, I'd sleep with the light on because <laughs> I was convinced that werewolf or that vampire was going to get me as soon as I closed my eyes. Sometimes thinking about healthcare issues is like that. You know, we don't want to think too much about it. We want to go to sleep with the lights on. But sometimes that's not possible. So it's important in any plan that we create that we talk to our clients about this, the what ifs in life. It doesn't mean you have to buy something, but it does mean you have a plan. And then when it comes to long-term care, here's what I try to help people understand. Before you think about how you're going to pay for it, you have to do some, some basic thinking and listening. And what do I mean by that? Uh, if, if you're married, you and your wife, your husband have to have a conversation or with your significant other. And I call them the W's. There's three W's there. It's not if, but the first W, when I need care. When I need care, how does that happen? Second W, when I need care, who is going to provide that care? Who will provide that care? Third W, when I need care, who will provide it? Third W, where am I going to get that care? Where do I want to get it? Once you've answered those questions, that's the really beginning of the plan. And then the fourth part is, okay, nothing is free in life. Somebody's got to pay for this care if I need it. So you need to build that into the plan. And most people go from long-term care talking about it to, you know, you're fully incapacitated. You, you have an Alzheimer's. Or you've had a total paralyzing stroke. We always go to the worst case scenario. And for most people, it's not the worst case scenario that they experience but they do experience some problems. And some of those problems uh, require outside help. 
And one of the ways to talk about that is to say, you know, for me, I want to be cared for in my own home. I want to be able to watch, you know, John Wayne movies and college football and eat pizza and M&M peanut candies and just have a good time at home and have somebody come in and care for me. That's infinitely better than saying I need to go into an institution. Now, that may be the only option, but it's rarely the only option for people. So doing the three W's, when I need care, who's going to give it, where am I going to get it, helps narrow down. And that's the basis for the, the health care plan, if you will. And then once you've done that, then we can figure out what are the, what are the options for us? You know, there, there's some options the government provides that aren't going to cost anything. Are you aware of them? We can help you with that because that'll, that actually brings some peace of mind that it's not the catastrophic issue. Sometimes that happens. But if we plan for the other things too, that can be a great benefit to people in creating a retirement plan that gives them peace of mind. So this is important, ladies and gentlemen. Give us a call. We can help you talk through these things and walk through these things. 616-301-2581. 616-301-2581. Or go to our website, www.cornerstone-rp.com www.cornerstone-rp.com. We will help you get answers. We'll help walk through the whole system so that everything gets uncovered. We handle it and there's no surprises to the best of our ability. And important factor and advantage there with Cornerstone Retirement Partners, Ron, your team looks after both the wealth and the health. Yeah. You are a full service financial investment uh, planning firm and advisory, but your wife, Nancy, and her team focus on that healthcare side of things and know the options, the ropes, the ins and outs, and, and how to address these big questions, potential expenses, and all of the variables that go into that side of the consideration because they are intertwined and, and one absolutely impacts the other. They do. And, and that's why that's part of our whole planning process. She does an incredible job uh, with her team and we can help and she will help if, if health care insurance is an issue before 65, before somebody becomes Medicare eligible, she can help with that. She can help with them. They absolutely do a great job with figuring out the best Medicare options for you. The Part D, what are we going to do about the drug plan? And then also long-term care help, payments, coverage, things like that. So it's such an important part of, of the whole planning process because enough studies have been done to say, you know, in retirement, the two biggest expenses we're going to have are taxes and health care issues. So if we tackle those things going into retirement, it's a lot easier to deal with them as we age and get through retirement than just saying we're not going to talk about it and we'll deal with it whenever it happens. So this is important, this kind of planning to help you, ladies and gentlemen. Give us a call at 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581, and we can and will help you. And once again, if you would like this list of the 12 questions to know how ready you are, are you prepared to retire? Pick up the phone, give Cornerstone Retirement Partners a call, 616-301-2581, or shoot them a line through the website, cornerstone-rp.com, and request the Are You Ready list. 12 questions to know how prepared you are for retirement. Now, Ron, we need to think long-term when it comes to retirement planning. The decisions that we make before retirement or on day one of retirement often don't have their ultimate consequences until much later into and through retirement. So the decision on pensions, the decision on social security often have survivorship implications. Next on the list, have you calculated how much income would be lost if you or your spouse pass away? This spousal income dependency issue is one that we need to think through with really a, a, a good perspective that has seen this through before. Oftentimes, uh, we may not understand the full implications of survivorship income dependency. It, it really is important. It's an uncomfortable thing to talk about <clears throat> because, <coughs> excuse me, down deep inside, nobody wants to talk about the death of a spouse or a significant other. Part of our job, though, is to try to gently talk about these things. Because here's two things that do happen when, when a spouse or a significant other dies. Income goes down. 
just normal. And number two, the other thing that can happen is that, and I hear this with, with particularly after somebody's died and they were, there's a married couple that were filing uh, jointly, all of a sudden they're single and they start filing a single tax return. And contrary to what the government tells us, they don't look at single widows. That, that's, con that's a contradiction in terms. They don't look at widows <clears throat> kindly. The tax implication is, uh, is pretty harsh at times. So that's, a, that's another consideration for us to deal with. It's something that we're willing to help people. Uh, we don't force them to do it, but it's such an important thing that says, you know, ultimately, there's only going to be one of us standing. So what are we going to do about that? Because we don't know when that's going to happen. So if we built the plan to, to take advantage, so to speak, of the time we have now to create a potential income plan for a single person, it makes the transition so much easier. There's a lot to deal with when a, a significant other dies and it, the grieving process never really stops. It just gets minimized. But the last thing somebody needs to do is worry about, oh my goodness, what's going to happen to my money, my income? What am I going to do about taxes and things like that? Well, it's, it's harder to worry about it as you are going through it and your brain is clouded with so many other thoughts and feelings and emotions as well. So yeah, nobody wants to think about this, Ron, but it's a lot easier to plan for it ahead of time and then as much as we can be, be prepared from at least a financial standpoint so that we're not making emotional decisions or knee jerk reactions so that we have thought it through, we've planned it carefully, and we are confident that we've given our spouse that gift of assurance and confidence and pre-planning, I think is the important thing there. Um, I, I feel that is something that I would want to give to my wife if at all possible. And, and at this stage in my life, something that I feel like I have provided to as great an extent as possible. You know, my wife and I treat ourselves uh, as clients. People kind of look and say, what? Yeah, we treat ourselves as clients. And uh, we do two absolutely formal reviews every year. It's kind of like an outer body experience for me because my wife, Nancy, says, well, what do you think? And I say, well, I don't know. She says, well, you're my financial advisor. And I just say, yeah, but you're not paying me enough for this. So what do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> but we go through this. You know, just recently, her, for example, her mom is in a nursing home and she's going to have her 90th. Well, she's 90 years old now and her body's breaking up. And so one of the things that her sisters have talked about and that they did it, they've gone to, because her mom wanted to do it, to make arrangements for funeral planning. Now, her mom doesn't think she's going to die in the next six days, but it's part of the planning process. And what that did for my wife and me is it forced us to have a conversation about that part of our life. What happens when one of us die? How do we want that first part to go? What kind of service? How do we want, do we want to be cremated or buried? Those kinds of things. Uh, and it was a good discussion. We've had those discussions before. But it's been interesting that over time, my approach to this has not really changed much. But what my wife Nancy's has a little bit. So it's always important to have those conversations because we can think, well, this is what I want today. But a year from now, maybe our ideas change a little bit. And if we built a plan on what we want today, but a year from now, our ideas change, the plan has to change. We have to make that adjustment so that there's no, oh my goodness, we didn't think about this when something does happen. So it, it's important, even little things in the planning process are big things. It's important to get them out in the open, to have a conversation about them. And we, we try to help implement that conversation so that people can talk about uh, sometimes the things that aren't as comfortable to talk about as we'd like. So if this is important, give us a call, 616-301-2581, 616-301-2581. We can help you with the conversation. We can help you with the planning. We can help with making changes where appropriate. We could make it fit for today, the best way we can make it fit for you so that you have the best probability of success going forward and you have peace of mind. Give us a call, 616-301-2581.
and and request this list the are you ready yeah. the 12 questions are you prepared for retirement list because ron just having this list and and sort of running through that together i think would give us a good uh preparedness mentally emotionally psychologically and financially to have these conversations. You go through the list, you, you take a look at it, and, and maybe you circle a couple that are of particular concern or, or that you have not yet really addressed to a high level of confidence, and then you're ready to have those conversations. So again, uh, this list, I think, is a, a fantastic resource to go over on your own time, request, think it over, review it with yourself, your spouse, your family members, give the list to another family member, have them go over it. Uh, but then the the value is that any any issue that is on this list that has not yet been addressed you can go over with Ron Corser a certified financial planner and the team there from Cornerstone Retirement Partners 616-301-2581 616-301-2581 Ron a few of the other items on this list deal with inflation deal with taxation uh and and then I like the last one getting that plan in writing. Do you have a written retirement income allocation, a plan for retirement income in writing? Why is this uh, the final point and question on the 12 questions to know if we're ready to retire? It's, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like traveling on your vacation. If today you decide, well, I'm going to take a two week vacation. Uh, generally people just don't get in their car and start traveling without any idea where they're going. Rather, what they do is they start to plan ahead of time. They get hotel rooms where they're gonna stay. They figure out they need a rental car. They figure out what kind of things they need to maybe make reservations for so they can get in line, so to speak, and pay for them. They actually do a written vacation plan. <laughs> I mean, we do it when we go places. So it's the same process, the same idea. When it comes to our retirement plan, we need to make sure that it's in writing, it's in black and white, so that we know the following. We know, number one, where all the money is going to come from every month into our checkbook to pay our bills and maintain our lifestyle. Number two, we know and understand that we have an investment strategy, if you will, that's tailored to, that, to fit that income plan. Number three, we know that we have extra money in another account, so to speak that's not required to give us the income we need. It's, it's money we can use to do the, the nice stuff in retirement, to take those vacations, to, to be an emergency fund against something big happening, to take care of our kids. I mean, we had a daughter, I love her dearly. She's in great shape now, but she came back three different times to our house <laughs> after she left. It costs money, you know? So those kinds of things happen. So you, you need that. You really do need it in writing and you need to be able to do the reviews like we talked about at least twice a year and maintain contact otherwise over and above the reviews to make sure that we're on the same page as you because this is about your retirement this is about your money this is about your life savings and this is about your plan for retirement in retirement and also for the health care things that may or may not come up as we go forward so ladies and gentlemen, give us a call, 616-301-2581. We can send you this simple one-page 12-step idea about are you ready to retire. It's not a bad idea to go through it. I have never gone through this with anybody that's been able to answer yes to all 12 of them. So that's the value because it uncovers those things that maybe you need to give a little more thought to to kind of fix or to adjust. So give us a call, 616 616- 301-2581 or go to our website www.cornerstone-rp.com put your information in there if you want to request this little simple one page 12 step issue give us a call we'll send it to you and and you'll find it to be a value and it you know what the best part of it is it's free so that means you don't really feel necessarily obligated to do any of it because it's free but it's a good guidepost for you to take a look at to see if maybe you can improve your current situation that will give you the highest probability of success going forward. 
616-301-2581. We always appreciate you tuning into the program. Ron, we appreciate your guidance, the perspective that you provide here on your course to retirement. And ladies and gentlemen, we just want you to take your planning and your financial future seriously and feel confident that you are moving toward achieving your goals. That's what the list, that's what the program, that's what the resource there at Cornerstone Retirement Partners is all about. Give them a call, 616 301 2581. And we will look forward to hearing from you soon. Ron, I look forward to talking with you again next week. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a blessed Sunday and tune in next week for more good information. Talk to you soon. Tune into Cornerstone Retirement Partners full radio program, your course to retirement, Sunday mornings at nine o'clock at News Radio WOOD or visit cornerstone-rp.com for many valuable resources, including those mentioned on this show and other great episodes of your course to retirement. The content of this radio show is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. You are encouraged to seek investment, tax, or legal advice from an independent professional advisor. Ed Slot's Elite IRA Advisor Group is solely an indication that the financial advisor has attended training provided by Ed Slot and Company, passed by annual examinations on material covered at conferences and in webinars, and met other membership requirements and does not constitute an endorsement of any kind. Ed Slot's Elite IRA Advisor Group members pay a fee for the educational programs that allow them to be included in the Ed Slot's Elite IRA IRA Advisor Group. Membership does not guarantee investment success. Fiduciary duty extends solely to investment advisory advice and does not extend to other activities such as insurance or broker-dealer services. Advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, a registered investment advisor. Advisory clients are charged a quarterly fee for assets under management, while insurance products pay a commission, which may result in a conflict of interest regarding compensation. Any investments and or investment strategies mentioned involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. Any comments regarding safe and secure investments and guaranteed income streams refer only to fixed insurance products. They do not refer in any way to securities or investment advisory products. Annuity guarantees are based solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing company. Withdrawals of growth from annuities may be taxable as ordinary income in the year it is taken. Individuals should review contracts for specific details of the products featured.